Welcome to the Unrest Podcast. I'm Madeline Green. And I'm Caitlin Stansel. Thanks for tuning back in. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to our podcast so you get all the latest episodes as soon as they post. And hey, if you like what you hear and you want to help support us, check out our bio on our social media channels for a way to donate to all of our ghostly, spooky endeavors here at the Unrest Podcast. Yes, please give us all your money. (laughs) We need to buy eggs. (laughs) If I see one more egg meme, I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. Before we get into our real life haunt today, I have a sort of funny story to tell about one of our previous episodes. So if you haven't listened to it yet, go back and listen to Rachel's story from a couple weeks ago. If you haven't been on the show, the way that Madeline and I do the interviews we do them separately um and then we come together like one night a week or every so often to record together and sort of listen to the stories and then react to them just because that's how it works best with our work schedules but the other day I was out at a work dinner and part of that dinner was an escape room and These people I was having dinner with, like, I don't get to see them every day and I don't have, like, super close relationships with them. So it was just a really good opportunity to meet some new people, get to know them. And they wanted to do this team building thing. So we're broken into three or four groups to do the escape room. And in my group, we're going into the ransom room, which is, like, probably their spookiest room, first of all, like... They just turn off all the lights. You have two flashlights and you have to solve the mystery that way. But there's a girl in my group and I never really like had a lot of conversations with her. I just met her a couple weeks prior to that. But anyways, we do the escape room. It's really fun. We come out and we're just talking about, you know, like, oh, like this was a great idea to do the escape room. But like next time, maybe we should do like a ghost tour because we're in downtown Charleston. And me and this girl are like, yeah, like the ghost tours here are so good. And she's like been on the jail tour several times, like during a full moon. And she's like, you have to do it. It's like the best experience. And that's like one of my favorite ghost tours in downtown Charleston is the jail. And then I was like, hey, like me and my friend, actually, we do this ghost podcast if you're like into that sort of thing. And she was like, I was just on a ghost podcast. (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) And she was like, let me see if I can find the name of it. And I'm like, hold on, Rachel. I was like, we just interviewed a Rachel. And I'm like going back to look and like we're both like trying to see who can find it the fastest. It was her. (laughs) No way. We had interviewed Rachel, then I met her in person, and, like, all of the connections started making sense, like, because her story was about Washington State and her apartment that she lived in there. And I was like, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> Holy cow, what a small world. And it was- How did a, I even find her? I think she had posted in a group about her story, and so Madeline had done the interview that week, or Rachel, I think, had actually recorded- her story herself and that's sort of how we worked it into our recordings so I never like talked to her when we did the actual episode and I just never made that connection until this like (laughs) weird meeting (laughs) and we were like dying laughing after that once we sort of realized that she was on our podcast and oh my god together yeah so blown away so Caitlin wouldn't tell me this story until we were on here so she could get my live reaction. <laughs> isn't that's that so isn't that wild? Like what a small world. <laughs> Gosh, that's funny. And then I was like, dang, I hope <laughs> when she was first telling me, I was like, did I interview her and just like not realize this was her? And then no, when yeah, I looked back, saying. I was like, oh, that was one that Madeline had gotten. Yeah, she, she was like, no, recording. actually I did it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? And I was that's like, that's absolutely nuts. I was just like shocked the whole rest of the night. I was like, I cannot believe that. Yeah, no. I mean, we're going places. Yeah. Um, and apparently she told me that she was like, we have to go on the jail tour together. 
she said she's like had experiences on it where she's like felt someone like touch her. Um, but she was like, you have to go on a full moon. Like that's the only time that you would have an experience. So yeah, like, I don't know, just like so weird how the world works. Right. And like the connections you make. (laughs) Oh yeah. A little off topic though. We're going to do another giveaway. So before we get into the real life haunt, Just make sure you check out our social medias. We want to try and gain as many followers as we can. So we're going to do another giveaway of our stickers, our Unrest Podcast stickers with our favorite ghost, Boozy, and a gift card giveaway. So check us out on social media to get in on the giveaways. And share us with all your friends. Yes, because your friend, you might interview somebody who's your best friend and you didn't know it (laughs) (laughs) and then they're on the podcast (laughs) so for this week's real life haunt i talked to mariah and she shares with us a sad story of the passing of her father but she was blessed with a little goodbye from him before he passed so check it out January 28th of 2020, I was, it was about 11 o'clock at night and I was giving my dog a bath and the way that our bathroom is, whenever I'm bent over washing her, I can lean back and I can see into my dining room. So it was kind of a small bathroom to where I could lean back and see throughout the whole house. So I was giving her a bath. And my boyfriend was already asleep. He works first shift, so I didn't really think that he would be up or anything. But I felt somebody behind me, so I turned around thinking, okay, it must be him trying to see what I'm doing. Well, when I looked, it was only about maybe a split second. I see this white mist, and it looked like And it was so weird. It looked like my dad, but he was younger in jeans and a white shirt. And it was only for a split second. And then it went away. And I was so freaked out because my dad was alive as far as I knew. (laughs) So I freaked out and I called my boyfriend, like I hollered for him and he got up and I was telling him what happened. And he was like, well, you know, maybe you're just bent over and you're, all the blood rushed to your head like you don't know what's going on like come on let's go to bed at about 2 a.m i get a phone call and it's from my sister and she's like hey i need you to get up to the hospital dad something's wrong with him like he's not responding we don't know what's going on with him and i was like oh my gosh you know so i jump up and i get my clothes on and i you know i left everything i just had pajamas on And I got up there as fast as I could. Well, he went in the day before because he had really bad kidney stones. So he went in for a simple procedure and it didn't go right. He only has one kidney. So whenever he was on the table and they opened him up, for some reason, I don't know exactly what happened, but all of his organs started to shut down. He basically flatlined. And he died on the table. But they brought him back, but he was on machines. So by the time I got there, he was just on life support. And when I got there, I told my mom, I thought he was already gone. He was just on, you know, he the, the machines were just keeping him alive. And um, on January 30th of 2020 at 1.28 a.m., he died. And we had to watch him come off of life support it's not like in the movies when they say they just close their eyes and go to sleep it's not like that at all it was pretty traumatic and I wish me and my sister wouldn't have seen that because it scarred us for the rest of our life we um (laughs) sorry it's a it's a bad story yeah I still get choked up about it talking about it but um after that a couple days go by and then I go to sleep And I have a dream that I'm standing in a long line and everybody in line in front of me and behind me are sobbing and crying. And just in my head, I knew, oh, okay, we're standing in line 
waiting to hear about our loved ones that have passed on. Like, I just knew that in my head. It was so weird. And I, it was finally my turn. And it was, there was this being there, standing there. And I told my mom, it was so weird because this being didn't have, I couldn't tell if it was a female or a male, like it didn't have a gender. It was just, it was just a being. And they were like, you can ask three questions about your loved one. And then after that, you need to go on with your life and make peace with this. And I was like, okay. And so my first question was, well, is he okay? Like, is he at peace? Like, you know, what's going on? They were like, well, yeah, he's at peace. He's fine. He's with his family and he's happy because see, his mom died and his dad died. So both my grandparents were passed on. So they were like, yeah, he's fine. He's at peace. He's actually hunting and fishing, which sounds like him. So I was like, okay. And I was like, um, well, is, um, sorry, it's still really hard to talk about. And, um, I was like, so he's okay. He's with his mom. And this being was like, yeah, they're nothing but energy. They can come and go whenever they want. He comes down to you and talks to you and he sees you. And I don't remember the third question that I asked, but I do remember this being telling me that, hey, you know, they can come and go whenever they want to. He says that he's sorry for everything that happened. He's sorry that you and your sister had to witness him passing. You know, he didn't want y'all to see him like that. And after that, I woke up. And as soon as I woke up, it looked like someone lit a sparkler firework up above my head and it flew up in the air and just disappeared. It was so weird. I called my mom. At, it was like three o'clock in the morning and I called her and I didn't want to forget my dream. So I wrote it down real quick and I was talking to her about it. I needed to find more. I wanted to find out more about where we go and what happens after this life and I wanted to get proof just for my assurance and I wanted to help others as well with their loved ones passing so I made my own paranormal group after that when I seen the mist it was a younger version of him and it was just a split second and it was jeans and a white t-shirt and he was smiling so I knew he was happy you know and I think what it was is see he was in the hospital a day before that I knew about getting the procedure done and then then it happened that night so I think when he came that was when he was already gone and he was coming to tell me hey you know I love you I'm here that's just my best take on it like hey I'm okay like I'm gone and I just wanted to see you one more time before because everybody else like my siblings and stuff were young enough to where they were there already. They got to see him and talk to him before he passed, but I didn't. I was the only one that wasn't able to tell him bye. I wasn't able to give him any last words or anything like that. So that's my take on that. And see, I've always been obsessed with the paranormal ever since I was 10 years old and Ghost Hunters came out, and then Ghost Adventures came out. Like, I've always watched it like that, but I've never been, I've never had an experience like that until then when he, you know, he was so close to me when he died. So it was just, it it all made sense. But then I had more questions than answers to my questions. <laughs> I was like, well, why, is, why did he just pop up like that? Like, I, it just didn't make any sense. So I am the co-founder of North Carolina State Paranormal. We are out of Rowan County, but we go anywhere. We actually went to the mountains about a couple months ago in October. So we go anywhere, but we mostly stay around North Carolina and we do a lot of things with Gold Hill, Gold Hill Village. So, and actually in October, we are starting back the ghost walk after COVID. So we are the paranormal team for Gold Hill Village. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing that. And we've caught some really good evidence for people. 
we've called past loved ones. We just did investigation where this man's mother passed away and he had her ashes and her chair that she used to always sit on. And we got some really good evidence of her talking to us. And we've been to churches, we've been to schools. So we've had a lot of really good evidence. We've actually had a thing where we went to Gold Hill and came home and a lot of people call it an attachment, which is like if you are dealing with the paranormal and you come home, sometimes they can follow you if the entity or the spirit is strong enough. So after we did our investigation, I came home one time and for about a week, I was so paranoid. I'm usually a good sleeper. But I was so paranoid that I was being watched and I could not sleep. I had to wait till the day to go back to sleep. And it, it only lasted for about a week and then it would go away. And so we've had that happen a few times. So it, getting into the paranormal world and investigating and stuff, we've had a lot of new experiences and more questions than answers with the paranormal for sure. Gold Hill Village is in Rowan County, North Carolina, and it is a old mining town where they um, hunted for gold and did gold and stuff like that. So they have still over there, they've preserved a village where they've taken houses from that time and buildings from that time and kind of put them in like a little street in the middle of nowhere and you can go there and visit and it's said to be haunted and we've went over there and checked it out we've did all the buildings we've did the restaurant we've did outside and supposedly there's a woman that everybody in that community sees all the time and they think that it's somebody's wife one of the miners wives trying to find her husband that was killed down there in the mines and we've caught voices of a female talking. We've caught um, a man sounding like he's working in the mines. We've caught a bell noise. And it was so weird because I was like, that doesn't sound like a church bell. And when we showed one of the community people that helped run that place, she was like, no, that sounds like the old mining bell that they used to play whenever it was time to um, for like dinner or time for their shift to end. So that was really cool that we caught that. My advice would probably be to stay calm. It's a loved one. So there's really nothing to be afraid of. I think that my loved one in my experience, he came to show me that he was okay and that he was at peace and moving on. And if anything like that help, happens to anyone, you know, that's probably what they're thinking as well. Like, it's not really a scary experience. I wasn't scared. I wasn't terrorized. It was more of a shock. And then whenever I found out what happened, all the pieces started slowly coming together and made sense about what happened. You know, okay, he must have passed at that time and came to me to let me know so anybody that's going through that if you are scared you don't need to be scared in your own home that's what our group likes to tell people and share with people there's no reason for you to be scared in your own home call a professional to come out and help you if you need to or if you are religious in any way go seek help in that direction. Don't ever be afraid of the paranormal. They, we can always figure out a way for you to live with it, or we can find out a way for you to get rid of it and let them go in peace. You know, I think when loved ones pass, we always hope we have sort of an opportunity like what Mariah had to, you know, find some peace and feel like you had some closure with that loved one before they die. You know, when you hear about the passing of loved ones or like them being taken off life support and that kind of thing, you always think it's like a a peaceful type of thing. And she kind of shares that it, it was the opposite for them. It was very traumatic. And she almost wishes that her and her sister did not participate in that part of his passing on. But the fact that he does still, you know, come to her in dreams and in that kind of thing, I think is his way 
she said something about him almost like apologizing for what they had to go through with his passing. So I feel like she's lucky that he did come to her and help smooth things over a little bit because it seems like she was pretty devastated and and felt the effects of his passing very strongly as opposed to some people we have on here who it was more of like a peaceful type thing. Yeah. I mean, I could see how that would be traumatic, you know, knowing that you're the one that has to make that decision. I'm sure she felt very blessed to have some little piece of reassurance that it was the right choice. Also, she didn't say this in our interview, but when we were done, she did say that we could go on one of their ghost tours that she does around Halloween. So that should be fun. So make sure you stay tuned around October. Maybe we'll catch a gold miner haunting. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we have to do something really fun for this Halloween since we haven't really yet for the podcast. Maybe we'll do like a live episode yeah that would be awesome well if you have a story that you would like to share with us please do so you can email us at the unrest podcast at gmail.com or there's some other things you can do hey like following us on social media where we have all the links and all the fun stuff that you don't want to miss you can catch us on instagram again we're trying to get to a thousand followers so share us with all your friends We'll bribe you with boozy. (laughs) Uh, And then Facebook, we have our Facebook page and Facebook group where we have lots of fun content there. So meet us wherever you can on social media and we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, unrest in peace. peace.